Meteorologist Scotty, Scotty Powell is out at the Dunes Club right now. Scotty, what's going on out there? Yeah, so Frank, actually we've got a little bit of rain shower activity moving through the area right now and you can see behind me the flags are whipping, a little bit of a shower moving through the area and in fact a little bit of breaking news here, they just canceled the uh, Army parachute team that was supposed to be happening at 5 o'clock today due to these high winds and the precipitation that's fallen. Unfortunately, that will not be happening here at the event this year. So again, the parachute team will not be happening at 5 o'clock today, but the concert is still on for 6 p.m. tonight. Uh, granted, no storms or lightning pops up so everything's good there but uh, if you're expecting those parachuters unfortunately we're gonna have to wait another year for those but looking at radar right now you can see we do have a little bit of a light shower activity moving through and it's really lowered the temperatures out here in fact these winds have really kicked up and have really affected the round uh, first round scoring out here this afternoon only a few players scoring under par and so that wind really playing havoc on what's going on out here and those wind gust speeds right now are anywhere in the uh, 20 to 25 mile per hour gusts so Frank it is uh, very uh, windy and gusty out here, but again, play conditions, uh, the golfers seem to be uh, taking it in stride out here, but there is some fewer uh, higher scores out here, and we continue to get like pelted with a few raindrops, nothing heavy at all. You say I don't have a rain jacket or anything on, but we do have those showers continue to move through, but again, I'll just reiterate, if you were expecting to see the Army jump team, unfortunately, due to the high winds and the rain that's falling right now, that will not be happening, so uh, the concert is going on. But just a few light showers out here at the Dunes Club right now as the uh, first round of the Myrtle Beach Classic is about to wrap up for the day. Uh, we'll toss it back to you in the uh, studio, Frank, and hopefully uh, we can keep this weather nice for tomorrow. I know we've been watching a few storm chances uh, that could be brewing up. Thanks so much. Another big event happening this weekend, the Myrtle Beach Classic. Round two kicked off today, and our News 13 team is keeping you up to date with logistics and those scores. Meteorologist Scotty Powell and Sports Director Chris Parks are out at the Dunes Club right now. And how's it going out there, fellas? It's warm. It's warm and hot out here. <laughs> yeah, the sun came out just a little bit ago here. It's really heated things up here at the Dunes Golf and Beach Club. Yeah, it was a cloudy start today, a little breezy out there. We had a few showers roll through about lunchtime, and then as the afternoon went on, the uh, sun has popped out, and the heat and humidity has really, uh, really ticked up, and a lot of the golfers' scores have ticked up, too. We noticed this afternoon the rounds have been pretty high out there. Yeah, absolutely. Had some good rounds here this morning and this afternoon here. And as for the competition side, Robert McIntyre was the co-leader after 18 holes with Bo Hostler at 7 under par. McIntyre continuing his strong play through 36 holes. He is still the solo leader at this point at 11 under par, putting himself into a great spot heading into the weekend on Saturday and Sunday. For the 120 tee time here at the Myrtle Beach Classic for your second round, on the tee from Sweden, Alexander Bjork. And we got to do that today too. That was a pretty cool event. Uh, Chris and I both were able to uh, announce the players. Uh, you on the 10th tee, I was on the first mm -hmm. tee. Really neat experience. Yeah, it was fantastic today getting to do that for a couple hours, announcing guys from all over the world playing here in Myrtle Beach. I had to make sure I didn't mispronounce any names. <laughs> I was asking caddies, hey, how do you pronounce this? How do you pronounce that? Making sure I got everything right. But it was fun. I was smiling from ear to ear doing that. And we had a lot of responsibility because if a player was like two minutes from tea time and he wasn't there, we were supposed to call rules officials, all that. Thankfully, it was smooth out there for us. And like Chris said, we didn't mess up any names. So yeah, thankfully, nothing like that happened at all here. And again, Robert. Robert McIntyre, the leader right now at 11 under par as we play Bo Hostler right behind him. We got a chance to talk with Robert McIntyre earlier in the day about his great score and his start to 36 holes. And here's what he had to say after his competition. I mean, I'm comfortable. I'm just trying to become one of the best players in the world. And I mean, I don't know what limit I've got in, in golf. I don't know where my limit is. So I'm just trying my best every day, accept what score I get and just work harder. Yeah, and he's a guy you want to cheer for as well, too. Him and his girlfriend are both from Scotland. They moved to the United States for him to chase after his pro career. He's got two career top 10 finishes thus far, but he's still seeking his first win at 27 years old. So hopefully, maybe with some luck here, he plays a good 36 holes 
maybe he'll get that first victory here on the Grand Strand. Yeah, he is definitely striping the ball out there. Fellow lefty as well and part of the Ryder Cup, so that's pretty cool to uh, to see him out there. And to kind of sum up all that's been going on, I'm going to toss it to uh, News 13's Adriana Cotera, who will tell us about uh, the events that took place earlier today. Grand Strand golfers are teeing off at the Dunes Golf and Beach Club for the inaugural Myrtle Beach Classic. News 13, Scotty Powell joins us now live from the course. And Scotty, there's a chance for severe weather headed our way. How's it looking out there? Yeah, well, right now, Trish, we are seeing a lot of sunshine, but I'm going to have our Alec uh, pan the camera over, and you can see the clouds off in the distance. They are starting to billow the heat and humidity out here, really starting to grow those clouds up where we're seeing those thunderstorms, and actually those clouds are what's moving through the PD right now. Let's take a look at radar and show you what's going on. You can see that light of severe storms really from uh, just south of Lumberton down through Dillon and Latta. Uh, right now, this uh, severe thunderstorm morning, not in including Florence, but uh, it's not too far off as that uh, severe storm is moving through Darlington right now. And we actually have a few more storms that's moving through Lancaster County as well. So this is the line of showers and storms is going to be moving through. We're hoping that we can uh, get the play through. I know we've got about an hour-ish, hour and a half before the players start to finish up their rounds here. A lot of players finishing up now, but those uh, last few groups, Chris, may encounter these uh, storms that are getting pretty close. I will remind you the lightning radius around the course is eight miles. So any lightning within eight miles, they will blow the horn and suspend play until the storms pass through, Chris. Yeah, certainly good to know here. There's probably maybe about an hour or two left to game play for most of the golfers out here. So hopefully we'll be able to get the majority of the things in. And speaking of getting some things in and getting to do some fun things today, you and I got to announce yes. a few times today. Yeah, it was it was fun. You know, a little nerve wracking because you have all these uh, folks watching you and all these uh, uh, big time golfers moving through and you don't want to mess up their name. But I think you and I had pretty good success doing uh, just what we're supposed to do out there. Yeah, let's take a look at it. For the 120 tee time here at the Myrtle Beach Classic for your second round on the tee from Sweden, Alexander Bjork. Yeah, and so it was a lot of fun. Uh, we were told in our pre-meeting, Chris, that we may have to call rules officials, and we were like, oh, goodness. We didn't have to do that, a little, though. A, a little more than we bargained for. <laughs> yeah. Thankfully, everything went smoothly. Scotty got to do hole number one. I got to do hole number 10 on the afternoon. A ton of fun getting to announce the games, names and get to meet some PGA pros out there. So, a And they were around. all just so nice. Caddy's so nice. I mean, it was just a, a wonderful experience. I'm glad we got to do that. Yeah, absolutely. And good weather throughout the morning uh, made for some great scoring, too. And that included Trace Crow, who turned to one of the best rounds of the day. Scotty fired a 63-8 under par. He's firmly inside the top 20. He'll be playing this weekend. Crow discussed what worked for him and the adjustments he made from Thursday into Friday. Actually, yeah, I realized my ball position in my putting was too far forward, and I've been putting pretty poor the last couple of weeks. Been hitting it great, and uh, just focused on that this morning as well, and then uh, just started putting it great today. So hopefully we can keep that going. Yeah, that's the name of the game, Scotty. Drive for show, putt, putt for dough. dough. Absolutely. <laughs> that's where you can make up a lot of ground, especially if you're making one putt on each hole here to try to cut down on some of your strokes. We're going to have more coming up at six, including an updated leaderboard. Robert McIntyre, the current leader, he's at 11 under par as we play. And we'll have a wrap up of the events coming up tonight at 11 o'clock in sports as well, too. Yeah, and uh, we're on Blades Brown Watch. Current cut line right now it looks to be two under. Blades is one under right at that cut line. He's about to come up here on hole number nine in just a little bit. So 15 years old. 15 year old. We're hoping that he can make the cut for the weekend, but an exciting time out here nonetheless at the tournament. All right. Another guy you talked to as well. Brent yeah, Snedeker. Brett Snedeker. We uh, were able to uh, speak with Brett Snedeker on his practice round Tuesday. He talks to us about how he's getting back into his game after battling a few injuries and just how special it is to represent the United States in some of those team events. So, Brent, we're here at the Myrtle Beach Classic. Mm -hmm. First time on the tour as a pro for you, mm -hmm. not being here before. What, what What is your game plan going into a tournament like this? Yeah, it's excited to be here. I've never been to Myrtle Beach before, so excited okay. to kind of see, see the town and I've heard great things about the golf course, so I'm going to get out there today and get a check, get a look-see and see how, how it's planned. But um, really excited to go someplace new and check it out and have some fun while we're here. Yeah, so uh, looking at this course, obviously we're near the ocean. How yeah. much does the wind play a factor into this? Obviously, you know, I'm sure this course was designed for that. Uh, anytime you get around the, the water, there's always a wind going to come into play. And um, so hopefully the weather cooperates and get a little wind and have the course play the way it's supposed to and, and make it play a little tougher than, than normal. 
A lot of folks have been talking about this as a second shot course. Mm -hmm. What is your thoughts on that? I haven't seen it yet, but I mean, it's traditionally you know, it's kind of tree line golf courses around the, all around the water. It's a, it's a placement kind of stock golf course. It's not an overly long golf course. So making, you put the ball, making sure you put the ball in the fairway, give yourself opportunities for birdies around here. I'm sure the score will be pretty low. So you kind of know starting the week, you have to make a, lot, make a lot of birdies. Right. So you've been able to be a part of uh, some really cool things. The Ryder Cup presence, uh, won the FedEx Championship. Mm -hmm. Just talk to us a little bit about your career and how it's been. Yeah. You know, I've, I've been out here for a long time. Maybe years out here on tour and, and had some great wins on the FedEx Cup and won nine times on tour so gotten to experience a lot of highs and trying to kind of battle my way back through injury right now I had yeah. a couple injuries the last few years and trying to get my game back to where I know it can be so uh, it's fun kind of you know I'm 43 years old I still still feel like I'm young even though I'm not anymore but uh, I love being out here I love doing this for a living so I'm looking forward to having a great week one question I want to ask you technology how has it changed since you've yeah. been in, in, in the tour it's changed a ton, you know. When I got first on tour, we weren't using launch monitors or anything like that, and now pretty much everybody out here has one. Um, you know, the fitting's gotten way better, the equipment's gotten way better. Um, you know, it's just a different different game than when I grew up. You know, when I grew up, it was more about precision and putting the ball in the fairways and greens, and now it's about how far you hit it and hit it, swing as hard as you can at it. So it's a little different. I may know the answer to this, but what's a successful week for you this week? Uh, you know, try to get. I just want to get in contention. You know, I haven't been in contention in a while. Just give myself a chance on Sunday with a chance to win the golf tournament and see how it goes from there. I think if I do that, uh, it'll be a successful week, and hopefully, I can pull it out. Awesome. I'm excited, Chris. We just had an update. Blades Brown now in the cut. He has just birdied hole number six. That puts him at two under. And he's in within the cut line, so he's got three holes to just par out and make the weekend cut. Teenager making the weekend cut. That'd be something else here at the Myrtle Beach Classic. We got a lot of coverage coming up here Saturday and Sunday as well, too, from the Myrtle Beach Classic. Reporting for yep. us here at the Dunes Golf and Beach Club, Scotty Powell, Chris Parks. Let's send it back to the studio. Great job out there, guys. Thank you. Julia, thank you. You know, we're enjoying this nice, cool breeze <laughs> out here right now. It has been stuffy. It feels better out here right now. Scotty Powell, he's been out here all week. Let me tell you how you can know. Nice tan. <laughs> nice That's tan. Right. It matches your shirt. Yes. Talk about how the weather plays a part in this golf experience in the tournament. Yeah, well, just today, I mean, I was out here this morning. We had temperatures in the 70s, a little bit of sunshine. And then the rounds were pretty low this morning, but that rain rolled through right after lunchtime. The winds picked up and you can see now it's still a little gusty and those scores have really skyrocketed this afternoon. In fact, only a few golfers in the uh, top 10 right now that actually teed off this afternoon with those gusty winds. So it's kind of been like a tell of two different rounds out here. If you were teeing off in the morning, you got a little bit of sunshine, drier weather, but this afternoon with the wind kicking up and that rain that moved through around lunchtime, it really affected those scores. And uh, I'll tell you one thing it didn't affect Trish mm -hmm. was the people out here. Oh. They were still following the groups out here and it's been amazing to see not even the rain you know sometimes rain scares people no, off no it didn't today not when you're talking about golf it doesn't scare people off and it didn't scare us off and no. it's it's still beautiful out here I want to uh, let everybody know you know everything about golf you also <laughs> know everything about weather and a lot of people I'm sure want to know can I get your autograph you can probably get Scotty's autograph for free not these others. We want to tell you all about that. <laughs> so we have live team coverage from the Myrtle Beach Classic where we've had crews all day long. And just a few News 13 sports reporter Julia Kennedy brings us the latest on the first round of gameplay. But first, News 13's Trish Williford and Scotty Powell joins us live from the course. Trish and Scotty, you all have been out there all afternoon long. How's it going out there? And we've been having a great time all afternoon. And it wish you were here. Wish yes. you were here. Scotty, check them out. I know. They, they are out here. In fact, we tried to just get Trish to go I, down there and swing a club. I, but I did not want to get arrested. That's why that did not happen. But we're it gonna, seems We're like going to work on that next year, though. <laughs> no, we're not. It seems like they're inching ever so close to yes. us. Yeah. Talk they're, about the first round today. Yeah, they're finishing their round now, so some of these players probably not had the best round, so oh. they want to try to get their game in yeah. shape for tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, a lot of wind today. It's been very breezy out here this yes. afternoon, and I think that's really taken effect on some of the golfers. Just looking at some of the scores here, mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, some folks that are right at seven under par, which is pretty good Ooh. in these windy conditions, but uh, we did have a few sprinkles earlier. Those are going too, so that's all good. It's cloudy. Should it's we cloudy. be concerned about anything happening today or tomorrow? I think this afternoon for the rest of the event, we're going to be okay. Tomorrow, okay. we're going to have to watch that sunshine. Could pop off a few thunderstorms tomorrow. Ooh. We're going to keep our fingers crossed that it uh, stays away from us.
Well, listen, and I think the weather graphics are up right now. So again, we can handle a few sprinkles. That's nothing yes. wrong with that, right? Yeah, and, and you know, play will not be suspended here unless we have really heavy rain, right. really gusty winds, or lightning. In fact, uh, the weather service or the uh, PGA Tour has a meteorologist oh. that works with them that's detecting lightning across the mm -hmm. area. So uh, they're making sure that uh, there's no lightning. And as long as we don't have any of that or heavy rain or gusty winds, right. they'll continue to play and uh, may just have to... Uh, bring our raincoats tomorrow. Yeah, a little windy today, but you know what? That has cooled things yes. off a bit. And so, you know, we're just going to wing it here. And, yeah. you know, as we were just talking about, the golfers teed off bright and early this morning. News 13 sports anchor Julia Kennedy joins us now. Julia, I heard you got the opportunity to catch up with some of the golfers. Hey, Julia, thank you so much. And speaking of the first round today, how would you rate it? I think it's been pretty good. We've seen a few players struggle, but a lot of players have really found their groove on this course. In fact, looking at the leaderboard right now, we have three players at seven under, so that's pretty good. That's a 64 for the first round. Wish I could shoot a 64. <laughs> but uh, all in all, with the win factoring in, I think it's been a pretty good round. My buddy, though, Blades, you know, the rookie. Yes. He's not doing so well, so we're cheering for him hard tomorrow we're, that weekend. You're I, going yes. to do it. We're going to cheer He's going to turn him. around. All right. Thank you, Frank. And you can see there is a lot of sunshine out here right now, and it is pretty hot and humid. That wasn't the case to start today. We had some gray skies out there. Even a few isolated showers moved through between 1130 and about 1 o'clock this afternoon, right as the afternoon round was teeing off, and those wind gusts were pretty high as well. But as we got through the afternoon, we started to see the sunshine peek around. And if we'll pan over here, you can start to see the clouds developing. It is pretty hot and humid out here, so we're watching these cumulus clouds to bubble up and we've uh, seen those storms. What you're looking at is actually the storms back over the PD and those are going to be making its way into our area this evening. But right now, looks like pace of play may be able to finish up just as those golfers are coming off the finals holes here at the Myrtle Beach Classic. That's May when those storms start to pop up. So we may be able to dodge the uh, rain and lightning and thunder as they move closer to the coast, but it could be very close out there. And you know, after this a storm system moves through the area, looking at the weekend forecast, it is going to be beautiful out here. So if you do have tickets to come out to the Myrtle Beach Classic Saturday and Mother's Day on Sunday, we're going to see temperatures in the mid to upper 70s, low humidity. I will say one thing, though, with the uh, temperatures in the 70s and that sea temperature still a little low, we could see that sea breeze start to develop, especially in the midday to afternoon hours. And looking at all of the uh, effects of the wind this week on this golf course, we could start to see that wind come in factor in the afternoon rounds. That's when the leaders tee off. So we could see some higher scores in the afternoon. So if you are heading out this way, the wind will definitely be playing a factor both Saturday and Sunday. So as you are seeing out here, though, it is hot and humid right now. We're hoping those storms stay away. And Frank, like I said, it looks like we're going to have a great weekend for all the activities across the area.